Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the C-H-A-L-L, and today, Chow Chats, WWE Backlash 2023, massive, massive pay-per-view that went down last night. I stayed up for the entire event right up until 4 in the morning, and it was so worth it. It was so worth it. The crowd was amazing. The noise was ramped up to max. It was a fantastic event overall. Some great matches couple of matches that I feel like could have been improved but overall I think it was a very good event so in this video we're going to talk about each individual match we're also going to talk about my thoughts on what happens next beyond backlash we're also going to talk about my overall review of the event so if you do like this video please make sure you do like comment subscribe could have case bell stem is youtube video make sure you uh, leave your thoughts down below make sure you also Click the notification bell because we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers and half a million views. So let's get there as soon as possible. Huge transitional period going through on the channel this year. Massive facelift coming. And for now, guys, let's chat. WWE Backlash 2023. So we kick off with the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair, the EST of WWE taking on the genius of the sky and one third of damage control, EO Sky. Now then, just to list some of the accomplishments of these athletes, first of all, the challenger, EO Sky, aka the genius of the sky, multi-champion across many different promotions, uh, a world wonder ring stardom artist of stardom champion six times, a world of stardom champion, a world of stardom grand slam champion, a WWE Women's Tag Team Champion twice, an NXT Women's Champion, an NXT Women's Tag Team Champion, and also the winner of the Women's Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic in 2022, one half of those winners. So a multi-champion across many different promotions, a amazing competitor, a nice aerial offensive superstar. Now then, the EST of WWE, the current uh, Raw Women's Champion has some amazing accomplishments on her resume. Bianca Belair is the current Raw Women's Champion, but she's also been a SmackDown Women's Champion and a Women's Royal Rumble winner back in 2021. So then, uh, the match overall was pretty good. I like the the toing and throwing of the gymnastics, uh, the gymnastic uh, abilities of both athletes. I thought that was a nice sort of you know, addition at the start. I feel like Bianca and Io both showing off what they can do. Um, I felt overall it was a very nice paced match. I feel like overall it was uh, a decently paced match. One thing that I really liked uh, about both athletes um, was I liked that, first of all, Io Sky didn't take to the sky as quick as I thought it was going to be. I thought she was sort of picking her moments. So... That whole genius of the sky thing was kind of like a double entendre, like a catch-22, where it was like she's either picking a moment to reach for the sky or that might end up being her downfall in this match. Like She, she was a very offensive uh, superstar uh, in the early going. She didn't take to the sky as early as expected. She was very much on the ground, on the offense, and just went for it. Bianca, I knew going into this, was the more powerful of the athletes. Not to say that Io's not powerful, but I think Bianca's got power, she's got strength, she's got ability. Uh, she's very much a low-to-the-ground athlete. She does have her aerial moments, but she's a very low-to-the-ground athlete. And um, I thought overall there were some good moments of power, there's some good moments of agility from both athletes. There was also great moments from the sky, from Io Sky. Now, of course, the main thing about this match was, of course, damage control coming in. Um, little misstep there with damage control, and of course it led to Bianca Belair hitting the uh, KOD for the three count and the title uh, defense succession. Now then, of course, this points to a potential EO Sky face turn and a split from damage control, in my opinion. I'll talk more about that as to what happens next after Backlash at the end of the video. But overall, for Bianca vs EO Sky... I thought that was a fantastic match. So overall then, I'm going to give this match a 8 out of 10. Uh, I felt like the pace of the match was great. And overall, it was a wonderful match for the pay-per-view. So Bianca, EO, damage control, bows to you. Well done. 
Next up, for the first time ever, it was Seth freaking Rollins versus the Nigerian giant Omos. Now then. What about this for a matchup? Very much polar opposites in terms of style of superstars here. The Nigerian giant, Omos, accompanied by one of the masterminds of the wrestling ring, Montel Vontavious Porter, MVP, uh, Mr. 305. Uh, now, the Nigerian giant, in terms of his accomplishments in the past, he's been a Raw Tag Team Champion. He won the Rock's 25th Anniversary Battle Royal in 2021. Uh, now, Omos is a seven-plus-foot-tall superstar, uh, over 400 pounds. He's got an 87 reach. He's just this monster among men. Not to quote Braun Strowman, but he's very much a monster among men. And Omos, for me, I knew going into this match would be the more physical of the two. I knew that Omos would be the more uh, powerful of the two. I knew he had the strength, the military press with Rollins. Uh, over the t over the rope on from the outside was a show of that strength, um, but never count out Seth freaking Rollins. Never count out the Monday Night Rollins. Never count out the visionary, the architect of the WWE. Now some of his accomplishments are just endless. This is Seth Rollins right now, a two-time WWE champion, a two-time Universal champion, the inaugural NXT champion through the 2012 Gold Rush tournament, a two-time Intercontinental champion, a two-time United States champion, a six-time tag team champion, the 2014 Money in the Bank, the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble winner, the 29th Triple Crown champion, the second two-time Grand Slam champion. This guy has everything. We knew his previous works as well in companies such as Ring of Honor. This guy has everything. He's a future bona fide Hall of Famer and if Seth's watching this, he'll like that for sure. Overall, I think the match was great. I think that moment when Seth was about to hit the curb stomp and Omos didn't even go down. He's basically... He had his foot on his neck and he didn't even like take the force. He sort of held his neck up and he couldn't get the curb stomp down. And he had to go for the super stomp to finish off the match. It, it was it was unbelievable from both Seth and Omos. I think the super kick to MVP was a nice little extra uh, just, to, just to cancel out that equaliser. Um, now, overall for me, I feel like uh, the finish, like I said, was a super statement. Um, for me, I feel like it was just a wonderful, wonderful match. I feel like it was so perfectly done. And I think that Seth and Omos did a great job. It wasn't one of the standout matches of the night, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, I feel like, um, you know, it was still a decent match. So overall, I'm going to give that 6 out of 10. I think that was probably a decent showing. Not the standout, but I felt like there could have been a couple more spots. But... Overall, I think that uh, they did a good job. Next up then, the United States Championship Triple Threat Contest between the almighty Bobby Lashley, the Aussie Beast, Bronson Reed, and A-Town Austin Theory, the current United States Champion. Now then, of course, we have to list off all three of these athletes' resumes. However, I will say straight off the bat, this was probably the weakest match of the night. Not because it wasn't good, but because there were other matches that were just so much stronger because they had so much more build-up and so much more riding on it. That's not to say this wasn't a great match because it was a good match. It was a decent match. Now, then, let's start off with the challengers. First of all, Bronson Reed, who's been a champion in other promotions as well as the WWE and specifically NXT as well. Uh, Bronson Reed, a former NXT North American champion, but before WWE, he was the Melbourne City Wrestling Heavyweight Champion once. He was an MCW third Triple Crown Champion. He was the International Wrestling Australia Heavyweight Champion as well. Um, overall, a beast of a man, very agile for his size, and you know, someone who's been a real standout in the indie circuit, who came into WWE the first time, blew us all the way through NXT, uh, left WWE, came back uh, after a stint in companies such as Impact Wrestling, and you know, definitely blew us all away in my opinion. Now then, the almighty Bobby Lashley is a mountain of a man, one of the Mount Rushmore's of you know, athletes and combat sports athletes. Now we've got a list off this resume here. 
National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics All-American in 1995, 1996, 1997 and 1998. And NAIA Collegiate National Champion, uh, 1996, 1997 and 1998. He's a Sharks Fight Heavyweight Champion in the world of mixed martial arts. He's a former Impact World Heavyweight Champion four times, a two-time WWE Champion. Two-time ECW World Champion, a two-time Intercontinental Champion, a three-time United States Champion, and the 2023 winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So Bobby Lashley is the almighty. He lives up to that title. He's a powerful athlete. He shows dominance. He shows physical force. He just seems to be missing out on the United States Championship in recent months. He just seems to be just falling just short of catching Austin Theory for that United States Championship. And I think, and this is probably a teaser going into that section at the end of the video, talking about what happens next after Backlash, I don't think it's going to be too long now before Bobby Lashley gets back one-on-one -on -one with the United States Championship. Now then, the champion, in my opinion, who's been a little weasel in recent months, Austin Theory, A-Town, the United States Champion. I may say he's a weasel, but do not discredit this man's accomplishments. I'll give him respect where it's due as, 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 a, as a superstar, as a performer. I'll give him his respects. He is a National Physique Com uh, Committee Georgie Teen Men's Bodybuilding Champion. He's a former Evolve Champion, a two-time United States Champion, including currently, and the 2022 Men's Money in the Bank winner. He was also Miss McMahon's uh, chosen protege, of course, after the original protege, the chosen one, Drew McIntyre, years ago. And Austin Theory, look, don't get me wrong, his in ring acumen is amazing, but just the way he scams wins in these recent months, he's been a bit of a weasel, in my opinion. Not to say he's a great guy, but I feel like he's just been a bit of a weasel in the ring uh, and really scamming victories, which really works with the, uh, you know, he has, the, he has the, the action to back up the talk, but I think he's just been scamming victories in recent months. But uh, that's just in my opinion. Um, Austin may, Theory may say differently, but uh, that's his opinion as well. But overall in this match, like I say, it was the weakest of the ones, but in my opinion, not because the match wasn't great, because I think it was a decent match. Um... I think Bobby and Bronson were going to be the most powerful of the two of the three going into this match. We knew that Austin Theory had to play it a little bit smart here. Um, and to be fair to him, he, he used the uh, the in-ring mentality. He, uh, you know, we saw the, the spear on Bronson. He threw out Bobby out the ring and, and scammed the three count. But th that was just in-ring smartness. It wasn't just scamming a victory. He, he, he played it smart. He, he, he used that in-ring mentality and that in-ring IQ to realise the situation in front of him and think of the best solution to keep his title. Uh, there were great individual moments. I feel like the uh, agility of Bronson Reed was on show there with a sort of a flying Vader bomb from the, from the out, on the outside from the second rope. Um, I think Bronson had some great moments of his own um, in that match. I think that Bronson really showed what he can do in that match. He had a really good match. Bobby, in my opinion, with the good strength, the power, the dominance, you know, the uh, what we come to expect from Bobby Lashley. Uh, but just Austin Theory was just too smart on the day, on the night. And, um, you know, I'm sure Bobby and Austin will probably come to blows one-on-one -on -one at some point, maybe SummerSlam. But again, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But Austin keeps the title, and uh, overall I'm going to give that match 5 out of 10. Yes, it was good, could have been better, but... Yeah, like I said, probably the weakest due to other matches that went on during the night. But Austin, fair play to you. You get the United States title. You keep it uh, for at least another few weeks. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Next up, for Puerto Rico, one of the highlight matches. The SmackDown Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley representing the Judgment Day against Zelina Vega representing the LWO, the Latino World Order. Um, just to list these guys' accomplishments, Rhea Ripley, first of all, this current SmackDown Women's Champion, she's had a hell of a run in WWE so far. She's been one of the most dominant women across the roster over the last few years. Um, a Raw Women's Champion, the current SmackDown Women's Champion, an NXT Women's Champion, the inaugural NXT UK Women's Champion. Uh, the Women's Royal Rumble 2023 winner, the 7th WWE Women's Triple Crown Champion, the 5th WWE Women's Grand Slam Champion. The Eradicator has just basically done that. She's eradicated the division time and time again. 
And Rhea's dominance and her power in the ring and her ability to just change a match like that is just, it's exciting to watch, it's exciting to see develop, and I think that Rhea's got a bright, bright future ahead of her. And the future is now, by the way, not just talking long term, we're talking the right here, right now. Rhea Ripley is the future and the now in the women's division, or one of the future and nows in the women's division. Now then, what about Zelina Vega? Of course, a veteran in the wrestling business. Uh, of course, in the past, she had been the valet for Andrade, of course, is now in AEW. Uh, but, of course, she's had her fair share. She's had her fair share. She's a women's tag team champion. She's a Queen's Crown winner in 2021. She won the TNA Knockouts Tag Team Championships when Total Nonstop Action before Impact Wrestling came along. And, you know, she's a real veteran of the business. And the reception she got to, uh, at the previous night in Puerto Rico, in Backlash, was just amazing to see. And I could see the emotion in her eyes when they were, you know, when they were before the start of the match. I could see the emotion in her eyes. I knew how much it meant to her. For those of you who don't know, um, her father uh, unfortunately passed away during the 9-11 attacks. And Zelina, for me, represents, in my opinion, taking such a negative situation and turning it into an ex inspiring situation where... You know, don't let grief get you down. Don't let, you know, the sadness of what's happened defy who you are. Let it be the thing that inspires you. I will do this for my dad. I will do this for my family. I'll do this for my for my nation. I'll do this for the WWE Universe. And that's what Zelina Vega brought last night. She absolutely brought that. Yes, Rhea Ripley, you know, with the kick to the head and then the, and then the, the rip tie with force... You know, got the three count. She retained her title. She knew, she wants to end that match right there and now. And I'm glad there was no interruption from the Judgment Day or LWO. Because I wanted that just to be about Zelina and Rhea. I wanted Zelina to have her moment alone in the ring. I wanted her to be the focus in that match. And she definitely was. She had the home crowd behind her. Yes, Rhea won the match. But Zelina won my heart. And she won everyone's heart in that arena. And watching at home. The millions across the globe watching the pay-per-view at home like I was. So... You know, Zelina, she's got my heart, she's got everyone's heart. Rhea was just too strong on the night, and she just she just knew when to finish the job. And um, But I think that Zelina had the home crowd behind her, and she's got nothing to be ashamed of in that match. Nothing. Nothing to be ashamed of. Overall for that match, I'm going to give that a strong 8 out of 10. I think an 8 is a strong rating. Uh, and like I said, congratulations to Rhea for defending her title, but Zelina... I'm with you. I'm with you, Zelina. You've got my heart. You've got everyone's heart. And you deserve that ovation because you, you did well. You did very well on the night. Now then, one of the highlights of the pay-per-view. Probably, in my opinion, I'm going to talk about this a bit more in detail at the end of the video. But in my opinion, this is the match they should have ended with. The San Jose street fight between Damian Priest of the Judgment Day and Bad Bunny, now of the LWO. Holy guacamole, this was a wonderful match. And I'm just going to go through the resumes, first of all, of these superstars. So first of all, Bad Bunny. Away from the wrestling ring, he's a very accomplished music star. Um, he's a 21-time uh, Latin American Music Award winner, a two-time Grammy Award winner, and of course a previous 24-7 champion in the WWE. Bad Bunny is an accomplished music star and he's just making his breaking ground in the wwe and the professional wrestling business damian priest we knew going into this match he had the more wrestling experience he had the in-ring iq but bad bunny was still going to give it a good go but damian priest had the in-ring iq now then this guy um a keystone pro wrestling tag team champion a monster factory pro wrestling heavyweight champion three times a former ring of honor world television champion in the wwe he's been a united states champion and north american champion first thing i need to highlight was bad bunny's entrance paying homage to the late ecw legend new jack he did it gangster style um Bad Bunny, for me, killed it on the night. He, his entrance, his wrestling acumen, the use of the weapons. I thought that Damien Priest using the Puerto Rican 
custom style kendo stick on Bad Bunny was a nice, you know, heel move, a nice heel touch. But then, amidst all of that, amidst all the weapons, all the maneuvers, all the agility, all the the flying bunny. You know, I love a flying bunny. Bunnies can fly. You know, pigs can't fly, but bunnies can. Um, amidst all of that, we have the involvement of the Judgment Day. We have the involvement of the NWO, Savio Vega. But of course, the big one, the, the one that got the huge pop on the night, along with Bad Bunny's entrance with the rap, was the return of the cool, Caribbean cool, and the newest member of the LWO, Carlito. What a return. Completely unannounced, completely unteased. No one knew that was going to happen, and I'm so glad it didn't get leaked anywhere, or, the, or if press found out before the fans, I'm, sh I'm so glad that nothing was released beforehand, uh, to my knowledge anyway, and Carlito was just on it. The, the pop made sense. It absolutely made sense, and I'm going to talk about this more at the end of the video, but I think this is building towards a massive match between the Judgment Day and and the LWO, but stay tuned to the end of the video to hear about my thoughts on that. But overall, this match was a beauty, and to finish with the Bunny Destroyer and Bad Bunny getting the ring, in, getting the win in Puerto Rico, it just made huge sense, huge sense for Bad Bunny to win that match. Bad Bunny had to win that match, and he did so with poise, with grace, with style, and with dignity. That match gets a 9 out of 10. It was so close to being a 10, but to be fair, I rarely give 10s in these WWE reviews. So, I'm going to stick with a 9 out of 10. It, you know, it takes a lot to make it a 10 out of 10 for me, but 9 out of 10 is still the strongest rating of the night. Absolutely deserved it, and in my opinion, it should have ended with that match. So, next up, the penultimate match of the evening. It is Riddle Bro and KO Zayn, the team of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, against the Bloodline, the Street Champion Solo Sequoia, and the Ones, the Usos. Hold up your Ones, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Ones. Now then, this is a six-man tag team match. Um, this was a decent match overall. So before, of course, we go into the match, going to list off the resumes of the athletes. And the reason why I'm doing this is to show you guys just how much of a decorated champion all these athletes can be in multiple different promotions and places. So starting off with Matt Riddle, uh, a former Evolve champion, the Monster Factory Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, a former United States champion, a two-time Raw Tag Team champion, of course one of them, well I think both of them, with uh, RK Bro, of course best of luck Randy Orton, uh, NXT Tag Team champion, and of course Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic winner, one half of that in 2020. Riddle Bro is the man in the ring. He wrestles barefoot. He's a striker. He's a combat athlete. And uh, he's got the wrestling resume to a T. As soon as he came into WWE, yes, he's had problems that have been documented and that have been reported on. But I feel like Riddle has the wrestling acumen to back up the talk in the ring. And is a great, great superstar and a great combat athlete. Now then, Kevin Owens decorated champion in the wrestling industry, uh, NXT champion, universal champion, two-time intercontinental champion, three-time United States champion, and of course the current Raw and SmackDown tag team champion, along with Sami Zayn, a former NXT champion, and a three-time intercontinental champion, and of course Raw and SmackDown tag team champion. So KO Zayn, best friends, they've been bitter enemies, but now they're best friends again, and they just work so well together. Whether it's against each other or with each other, they just work so well with each other. And, you know, both Kevin and Sammy deserve the pop that they got uh, from Puerto Rico. And, you know, Riddle as well. And just overall, it just felt right. Now then, the bloodline. They've been extremely dominant over the last few years here in WWE. And Roman Reigns, the Usos, now Solo Sequoia, the wise man, Paul Heyman... Um, they've just been so dominant. But since WrestleMania, the cracks have been starting to show. Uh, now, of course, Solo Sokoa, um, former North American champion in NXT, Future Stars of Wrestling Nevada State champion, Arizona Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, the Usos, a former Florida Championship Wrestling tag team champion, of course, the old developmental roster for WWE before NXT came along, 
a three-time Raw Tag Team Champions and SmackDown Tag Team Champions five times. Um, overall, this match uh, started off slow. I thought it started off a little bit stale, but Riddle picked up the pace. Um, for me, I think it was just an idea of, you know, I, 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 we started to see the, the stairs from Solo to the Usos. We started to see those cracks. Might have been one of the things why it started off slow. Then Riddle, in ring, picked up the pace uh, with his move set and all seemed to be going well um, until a certain Uso super kicked another certain Uso. And we could see the, the, the misconnect. We could see the disconnect. We could see the, the lack of uh, staying on the same page to an extent. Yes, it was accidental, but a sign of things to come. Um, the highlight for me was so uh, going crazy and almost doing the Samoan spike on his own Uso. Uh, on his own oose. Um, overall, just, just, oh, that just looked like a moment where you thought something was going to happen because he was, he was just, oh, he was just holding that spike back, and he was like, "What are you doing? I'm your brother." Um, yeah, overall, it looked like a very poignant moment in the in the, in the storyline, which seems to be the Usos potentially being banished from the bloodline uh, with Solo as the right-hand guy. Um, overall, just, it looked poetry in motion. And then Sami Zayn finishing off that match with the Holuva kick on Jey Uso felt just right. It felt just right, in my opinion. Um, overall, just a fantastic match. Overall, 6 out of 10. I'm going to talk more about what this could mean for the bloodline and for KO Zayn uh, later on down the line at the end of the video. But, let's get into our final match. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. So now it's time for the main event of the evening. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes taking on the Beast Incarnate, the Cowboy, Brock Lesnar. Now then, first of all, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, a decorated champion in our industry, has a WWE Intercontinental Championship twice a former three-time tag team champion, a former three-time world tag team champion, and the men's Royal Rumble winner of 2023. Cody Rhodes returning to WWE at WrestleMania the last year and just blowing us away ever since. The pain of just a month ago at WrestleMania in Hollywood, uh, just missing out thanks to Solo Sokoa. Uh, on gaining Roman Reigns' undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Um, overall, just just the pain of seeing him lose that, it was just heartbreaking. But the bigger picture here is Cody's redemption story. We see this a little bit here with, um, with John Cena losing to The Rock um, over a decade ago. Then working his way back and then getting that shot again at the Rock and beating him. This is Cody's redemption story. This is Co this is Cody's story. The, the story wasn't to get the titles on the first attempt. It was experience loss, regroup, bigger picture, you go again. And there's no better roadblock in the journey to prove your redemption to than the beast incarnate Barack Lesnar. Now then, the Beast Incarnate has a host of wrestling acumates onto his resume. The National Collegiate Athletic Association Division 1 All-American in 1999 and the Millennium. The National Collegiate Athletic Association Division 1 Heavyweight Champion in the Millennium. A former UFC Heavyweight Champion. And of course in WWE, a seven-time WWE Champion, a three-time Universal Champion, the 2002 King of the Ring. Men's Money in the Bank winner in 2019, and he's won the Royal Rumble twice in 2003 and 2022. Now then, Cody going straight after Brock, didn't even have time to finish his entrance, was just poetry. Uh, the aggression from Cody after the attacks and being held back on Raw, it just felt like the right decision to go straight off the bat and just go for him straight away uh, from a storyline point of view. Overall, just it just felt so right. It just absolutely felt so right. Um, I think that Brock bleeding, fair play to him. He was willing to take the blunt for that, and uh, you know, getting exposed on that turnbuckle, uh, that open turnbuckle uh, with the crimson mask, just 
again, just felt right for the storyline, showing that aggressive side of Cody Rhodes. And then, you know, there was aggressive moments from Brock, don't get me wrong. There was a moment where Brock really began to show dominance, then Cody sort of turned that around to a double crossroads. And, you know, it sort of all was looking well. Um, and then that Kimura, we thought Cody, well, I definitely thought Cody was trying to uh, do his best to escape. And then the innovation to sort of use Brock's own body weight and rolling forward into the cover with both shoulders on the map for the three cap was genius. The in-ring Akime and the in-ring mentality of Cody Rhodes on display there in full. Um, overall, for me, it was a great match. I've got to give that 6 out of 10. Just like the uh, Bloodline match with Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, I've got to give that 6 out of 10. Um, do I think it should have ended with that match? No, I think that Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest should have been uh, after uh lesnar versus uh, Rhodes, but overall i'd say it was a decent match a fair play to brock for bleeding and um yeah it was a great match to end on don't get me wrong it was a, it was a great ending uh, especially with brock bleeding and but but don't get me wrong i don't think this rivalry is done i think this could take us halfway through the year uh and then Rhodes sort of gets that next opponent ready for his Royal Rumble, and I've got a feeling that Cody Rhodes may end up being one of the Royal Rumble winner here. So, let's talk about what happens next in certain situations. Let's talk about what happens next after Backlash, in my opinion. So, let's talk about what happens next after Backlash 2023. First of all, Bianca will get her historic day to become the longest reigning women's champion in the modern day era of the WWE. Bianca will get that acumen. And one thing I didn't mention in the match review, which I think could be a foreshadowing, is that Bianca sort of knew the crowd was on Io Sky's side here as part of this sort of face turn, um, you know, going on. So I think Bianca played the heel stuff quite well. She, she admitted that she was probably going to be the heel in that situation to, uh, the previous night. And could this foreshadow a real Bianca Belair heel turn at some point? I, I think it could be. I think it could be an interesting direction for... Bianca to go, and I think if she is going to turn heel, maybe it could happen before SummerSlam or at SummerSlam. You never know. As for EO Sky and Damage Control, I think the split slash face turn is going to come sooner rather than later, in my opinion, and it's going to be very interesting to see if and when EO will strike. Austin's United States title run could involve Reed again because I think he absolutely deserves another shot one on one. Maybe Night of Champions could be the day, but. I think this is long-term building to a Theory Lashley one-on-one -on -one match with some kind of stipulation, whether that be in a cage or Extreme Rules or something like that. I think this will be building to a Theory Lashley United States title match at SummerSlam. Now then, what about Judgment Day and the LWO? Now this, of course, involves the Zelina Rhea match and, of course, the Bad Bunny Damian Priest match. I think this could be a... Great opportunity to put the two factions together in a match, a collision, a faction war at SummerSlam. But this is my idea. I would like to see the return of War Games. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see a War Games match between the Judgment Day and the LWO. I think this could be genius from the company to go down this direction. And I think it's definitely possible there. Next up, the cracks in the bloodline showing once again. KO and Zayn together will keep getting stronger, in my opinion. Riddle, I'm not too sure in what direction he's going to go in. Maybe it could be that he challenges Roman at SummerSlam while um, KO and Zayn finish off with the Usos. Maybe it's a case of that. But I think with the, with the draft happening, that what's well, happened, uh, with the brand split coming into effect this next week, I feel like the Tag Team Championships may get unified for one brand and then the World Tag Team Championships should be returning on the other brand. So I think that's the direction they could go in long term. Um, but I feel like Riddle should be the one challenging for Roman at SummerSlam. I think that that would just make sense with the Bloodline storyline at the moment. And uh, with Solo in Roman's corner, I think it would just make a hell of a lot of sense for SummerSlam. Uh, and I'll tell you why I think Cody should be going for it at SummerSlam later. But for me, I think it should be Riddle versus Reigns at SummerSlam uh, with Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa in the uh, the corner of the Tribal Chief. Uh, and I think Riddle will probably go for the title at SummerSlam because I think that's the direction they could uh, take him in while KO and Zayn finish off with the Usos. 
Cody's direction is going to be interesting with the bloodline on SmackDown and the World Heavyweight Championship on Raw. I think Cody being on Raw, I think that would be a waste of direction with the World Heavyweight title. It just feels like working towards nothing with the redemption story. However, it could be a blessing in disguise because it could be that Cody Rhodes falls short of the World Heavyweight title, wins the Royal Rumble, um, and decides to go to SmackDown to challenge Roman Reigns. I think that could be the storyline we could be seeing here. Uh, but I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens long-term with Cody. But I think at least for the next couple of pay-per-views, it's going to be him versus Brock Lesnar in a rivalry. Now then, what does this mean for Brock? Well, the latest heel toe could take him into an intriguing direction. Like I said, a mid-sized feud with Cody Rhodes on the road to WrestleMania 40. Uh, of course, Brock being a free agent post-draft, I think that helps a lot. Uh, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what Brock will do long-term. I think that, for now at least, it will be a rivalry with Cody Rhodes. So let's review WWE Backlash 2023. Overall, some great matches. The United States title one was the weakest of the lot. However, I don't think that was because the match wasn't good, because it was a decent match. I think there were just so many strong matches throughout the night. I think the Bloodline, uh, Riddle, Owen, Zayn, Six Man Tag was a good match. I think that Bunny versus Priest absolutely stole the night. I think Rhodes versus Lesnar uh, was a great match. Brock with the Crimson Mask just made it even more on edge. Uh, Zelina with the crowd on side against Rhea Ripley for the women's title on SmackDown was just a nice match. Um... You know, and and overall, I think Seth Rollins versus Omos was a good match as well, a great match. And you know, Bianca versus Io was uh, was it was a great match for the Raw Women's Title as well. So many foreshadowings, so many little elements happening, just little teasers and etc. Just little moments and big moments where it could change the turn of the tide in certain storylines and certain rivalries going forward. So. Overall, for WWE Backlash 2023, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And the reason why I've gone with 8 out of 10 is because I think it fell a little bit short with a couple of the matches or a couple of moments. But I think that overall, it was a very strong pay-per-view. Triple H did a fantastic job booking that show. And the producers did fantastically i think jamie noble was the one that worked on the bunny priest match if that's true mate fair play to jamie noble um so overall then backlash eight out of ten this year what did you think about wwe backlash comment down below and for now guys i am the chall chal just chatted wwe backlash 2023 to for now